So we've looked at uh, several of the growth reports, the gain model and the predictive model. Let's take a look at a diagnostic report, which gives us a little bit more information and displays the data in a little different way. So let's take a quick reminder of uh, the gain report, and, or we could have looked at the predictive model also, and remind ourselves that the, the growth standard uh, is always zero, and the growth measure, that's the the average gain, in this case by NCEs, that a group of students had made, that cohort of students from one year to the next. And then how uh, confident are we in that growth? The standard error, the lower that value, the more confidence we have in the calculation. So let's take a look at a diagnostic and then we'll, we'll drill down into one. So this is a diagnostic report. And we can see that it looks similar to the worksheets that we just did in this particular unit, where we have the growth, and then we have uh, one standard error and two standard errors. We'll, we'll talk about that here in just a little bit more detail. Um, and then below that, they'll display the, the data that we see in the, the two models, the gain index report and the predictive model report. We see the standard error values, and we see the number of students. In this case, we don't see that in the gain and predictive model. Uh, we also see the percent of students that are at each level. And that's data that we don't, don't necessarily see on some of the other reports. And then uh, there's one or two other factors that make this a very good report. So let's dig down into this a little bit deeper. As we mentioned a little bit ago, we, we still always plot in the, on our chart what the growth standard was, that zero line, that point where we met the growth uh, expectation. We stayed at our relative position. We met the performance uh, on our state test by uh, predictive models, for example, on the uh, ELA-1 test for high school, the students met, uh, as a group, their predicted scaled scores. So one of the things that this report does that the other ones do not is it divides the, the data up into five categories. And the, what those five categories represent are the low achieving students, on up to the high achieving. And those are done by the student percentiles, where the lowest percentile, or the lowest group in this case, are the students in the 1 to the 20th percentile. And the highest group are in the 80th to 99th percentile. So this middle group of students then would be at the 40th to the 60th. So these are our low achieving students and these are high achieving students. This value is determined by taking the students' historical rankings along with their most recent test so that I can see this group of students that fall into this lowest group, they historically perform at a lower level and they did in the most recent test also. So then we can tell whether we're improving or growing the students that are in this low achieving group are we growing them like we would in another higher achieving group? So this is what it might look like. We'll see uh, on the current setup from value added, the, we'll see the growth standard, that, gr that green line, that, that point that we're aiming for. And then we'll see whether the growth was higher or lower than that. Uh, and then th they're plotting in two different groups. They're plotting last year's students. So we can just quickly, just looking over this roughly, we see that the high achieving students are showing a lot of growth and our lower achieving students, in fact, all the way up to the middle group are falling behind. Let's dig a little deeper yet. They'll also show you what the, the previous three years worth of students did, that, that cohort of students that were also low achieving in this case. So I look at this particular report, I see that last year's group in blue, they did not show growth, and the, but historically they do. Same is true uh, in the opposite direction for the high achieving students. Uh, historically they show good growth and they did the year before too, so they're continuing that trend. But uh, for some reason, the most recent year, 
shows no no growth and historically they do so this report breaks the students down into five cohort groups of low to high achieving students and shows us previous year and then multiple previous years of student growth so the color coding on this will be just the same as what we talked about before now i just turned this chart over on its side and showing you the growth index or the growth standard of zero and then where does the growth measure uh, with one standard error and two standard errors fall and when we look at this and they plot this on the charts as well one standard error and two standard errors and we see that the growth measure in this case would be somewhere around seven and a half just looking at this I see that both of these lines are well above the growth standard of zero and so this would have been a dark green color if it was color-coded like it is on the gain model report the cohort of multi-year is a really tough one to tell because uh, you have to really zoom in on this but we can see that if we get close enough that the one standard error line is below the growth and that puts it into the orange category for this one it would be similar to this lay layout right here um, the the low medium group this group right here both lines one standard error and two standard errors falls well below the growth standard of zero and so that's dark red uh, and then the opposite for the multi-year group here with both lines above would make this a dark green so I have a dark green here and a dark green would have been in this area and I also also have a dark green here and here and here on this one this middle group I multi-year group is a three is I'm sorry is a dark red They're, they show strong evidence of not meeting growth and the same is true for that middle high group so the program that was put into place for this school uh, made a bit difference from the year before um, even though the multi-year groups in orange uh, show that there had not been historically these groups meeting growth so this is a nice growth what we're, we would be concerned about is what happened with this group of students here now there's one where we didn't have any color and that one if you follow this pattern matches the yellow so that's a group where they maintain their position so that group historically maintains their position but when I look at the previous year's data I see very good evidence of growth that dark green so this is another example of what that report looks like and we can kind of plot that uh, you know into a and kind of look at this like a almost like a graph and showing that as we get toward these middle performance levels last year in blue we don't show the growth that we had been historically making maybe there's another uh, new curriculum maybe there's a new teacher but historically uh, they had been meeting growth in this middle group and the low group the high group uh, we can see that that's following into that yellow category they maintained uh, and now the, the fact that there's not another set of data simply means there weren't enough students in the high group from the for the cohort there was last year but there wasn't for multi-year so multi-year there just isn't enough data in this to show so again I see that we haven't grown as much but that's okay we still have significant evidence of growth being met in our lowest group but we have uh, significant evidence of not meeting growth uh, the year before or in the, the most recent year the blue uh, for that middle group so the the question would be what has happened or what has changed with that group of students we have enough students. we know we don't see a bar for our our number two group our 20th to 40th percentile group even though we don't see a bar it's because that bar falls right on the growth measure so that would be an example of a yellow area if we saw it on the chart we just can't see that line because it's right on zero uh, the same is true for this group up here to high but it's not true for the 
what would have been the yellow section here because we didn't have enough students to even be measured. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of a background into the reading of a diagnostic report. We'll, we'll delve into this even deeper. One thing of, to note is that the EVAS system at, at the SAS Institute in North Carolina that creates all of this data, they're in the process of recreating a lot of these reports. The concepts will be the same, but the displays will, will have changed a little bit by the time uh, we get to the fall of the 2021-2022 school year. So thanks for watching.